Good evening, dear subscribers of NLB Freedom News. Welcome to this special edition of Monday, 2nd of October. Yes, October has begun. And this morning, something took place in the world of justice. And did it go well or not? What happened exactly for those who didn't see it? A little topography with Gloriane Blais. This morning she was being interviewed with Samuel. We're going to discuss it a little bit and see what took place this morning. Gloriane Blais, good morning. Thank you very much for being here. Hello, Samuel. Okay, I think, can can you hear me? I'll just change sides. I'll hear you well, Miriam. Oops, excuse me, Miriam Glorian. I'm preparing my show for Wednesday. I had Miriam's name here. Uh, salutations to Miriam. She's in her ear thoughts. Yes, that's it. And I was preparing... Today, I'm preparing Wednesday's show. We understand that we always prepare a little bit in advance, and I have her name here uh, th this morning. Gloriane, this, uh, today or this week or tomorrow, I think there's something important concerning you, uh, concerning your application. In fact, it's at 9.30 this morning, today. Yes, exactly. So I will be this morning in virtual mode with the in the audience so the last time the 12th of july i it was an obligation i had to be present so nobody could connect on teams because all the participants uh, in the audience were uh, present so today the judge gave me author authorization to be uh, in virtual mode. It's in Montreal. I'm in Quebec to avoid uh, travel and travel costs. I also have young children, so to have to organize all of that. And so uh, it's in virtual mode. So everybody will be able to participate. Those who will connect, I suggest that uh, you connect at 9.15 if you're interested. I can't promise you that everybody will have the possibility to be accepted because there's a limit uh, in technically uh, with the uh, palais de justice and the uh, judge uh, is to render his judgment today. In fact, I'm presenting an application for unconstitutionality. It's in the framework of the mask ticket that I had received on the 20th of December 2020 at the uh, uh, manifestation that was organized by Mel Goyi. And at that demonstration, I had received a mask ticket and I deposited an application for unconstitutionality. And up until now, uh, several citizens like me have deposited applications for unconstitutionality and the general prosecutor for Quebec uh, deposited uh, before the citizens an application uh, with a summary register, meaning that he doesn't allow us to hear our evidence uh, during, to have our uh, evidence heard during the proceedings. So today the judge will give a judgment uh, as to the application of the uh, pro prosecutor of Quebec. So if this application from the prosecutor is accepted by the judge, this means that I will not be able to present my evidence and my arguments concerning my application for unconstitutionality. It will fall. Uh, I can always go and uh, plead uh, to a higher instance after the uh, trial to the Court of Appeal. But at that stage, it will stop as is, as it took place for all of the other citizens. So, yes, that was this morning. So this uh, trial was heard with a judgment. And so now we will hear what took place. Uh, what happened, what was the action, what will be the uh, follow-up. And to discuss it, well, the person who is directly there involved, uh, hello, good morning, Gloriane. Hello, hello, Danielle. How are you? Yes, I have a big face. Yes, everything's well. It's uh, the screen effect. I'll back up my screen so not so as not to see myself blown up too much. Okay, that's not so bad. So how did it go this morning? Tell us about it. You have to tell the truth. T tell things as they are. 
Mm, a little moment of it's not I'm not discouraged personally I'm above that energetically I'm not discouraged personally because our strength is much too strong as we will continue as we continue to consider it however we could say that this morning the uh, legal system discouraged me Again, we could say again, because I think that we're becoming a little, uh, unfortunately, used to, if we can say it. It's not a good way to go. Tell us about it. Tell us what happened. What surprised you this morning? First of all, what is the decision? What was the decision? Well, the decision is on my application for unconstitutionality, as I explained to Samuel Grigny this morning, a, set, a new number of citizens presented an application for unconstitutionality like me, and it's not a criticism at all, but I was very aware that it's not everybody who has knowledge uh, for uh, legal interpretation as I have, because I was a lawyer uh, for uh, 22 years. So numerous citizens deposited applications for unconstitutionality. For me, it was special because it went against the law for uh, public health and not only a decree. And every time uh, if, if, in, before the citizens, the prosecutor for Quebec deposited an application uh, for summary register. It's hard for me to look at myself without you being there, I have to admit to you. It's don't worry, I'm still here. I I know. I think we should take advantage of your jacket. You're cute, you know. Well, thank you. I mean, we all dress up in sweatshirts at home. Those who want to relax, it's normal. But it's fun to see somebody, you know, elegant. Yes. Yeah, we're relaxed. You know, it's fun. I have all of my clothes. I'm ready to go out if I need to I have in interviews, meetings. We always have to be ready. I receive guests like you. I I need to look good. We can't uh, look anything. I became uh, a lawyer, not for the snobbery. It was so much to defend the people uh, for of which I'm proud and of which I'm a part so all of that to say that I was presenting an application for unconstitutionality concerning my mask ticket. And uh, just like all the other citizens, the prosecutor, the Quebec prosecutor who is defending uh, the uh, health law or decree deposited a summary register to stop us from presenting our evidence uh, in a contradictory debate uh, within a trial. Uh, proof that there was no pandemic. Uh, for me, that was it. I read judgments. Everybody has their arguments. And in all of the other causes, the uh, applications in a summary register was uh, uh, approved, meaning we didn't allow the citizens to plead their application for unconstitutionality in the framework of the trial. And I had hope because I was told myself, well, I've got uh, legal competences. I worked many, many weeks on this. Uh, in fact, in my uh, book that you published, uh, I had I put all of my, uh, well, not my verbal pleadings, but there are two emails to the judge in July that I sent. Uh, this is a very long written pleading, a very uh, in-depth work. We have to explain this to people because legal proceedings are very long. It takes a lot of time and you can't allow yourself many mistakes because when you're doing such work and we're in constitutional law, it's very, very whatever uh, legal file it might be as a lawyer we have to have the humility that we're always learning so even if we're in our domain of expertise we must always be humble enough to continue to learn because we're always working on a new cause so all that to say that i presented my application for unconstitutionality the prosecutor deposited his application for summary register we had a hearing on july the 12th 2023 uh, the judge allowed me to present arguments supplementary arguments in july and at the beginning of august and today we were we received his verbal judgment and it was written also on my application for unconstitutionality if uh, she would allow me to continue if she would allow me to do my presentation or not and now her judgment don't disconnect yet i i need to speak with you we'll keep smiling and we'll stay calm don't disconnect the connection unless you want to abandon the the show 
if you don't want to abandon, don't disconnect. So as with all the other causes, she uh, re accepted the summary and register, meaning that she refused to allow me to, to uh, apply for unconstitutionality. So now I have a lot of things to say because I will begin with the environment. That means... As I had already pleaded, I'm only repeating my words as a defendant in this mask ticket in the framework of another audience that I had already pleaded, but I didn't do it this morning because I didn't want to add another layer because the judgment was important this morning. For 20 minutes, I was trying to connect. It wasn't working. I'm not saying that there was any uh, conspiracy there. For 20 minutes, I was trying to connect. They're not seeing my name. I wrote an email. The judge finally responds to me saying, so then I connect, but not with my computer, with my cell phone. I was connected twice. Uh, my name couldn't be seen. And finally, I am included in the room. So for 20 minutes, the legal system, the palais de justice, could have uh, called forward a guardian because a gu uh, um a security guard was missing. I want to talk about this uh, security guard missing in the hall. And uh, this was discussed at Lux Media because they assisted the audience uh, on the 12th of July. So I'm not jumping around. You're going to understand. I'm explaining a little bit the context. During the hearing of the 12th of July, 2023, there was a security guard. That's okay. It's normal. A security guard for the courtroom. Uh, yeah, that's a normal proceedings. And it happens to me, I'll tell you. I'm, I can't say I'm proud of it, but it happens sometimes. I plead a lot for justice. So with all of my heart, and I want to be heard. When I feel energetically that I'm not being heard, sometimes I raise my voice a little bit. I was educated on, I was raised on a farm to speak loudly, to say, hey, don't forget to bring... Sometimes I might rise, raise my voice. I admit it. I'm not proud of it. At a certain moment, I didn't yell. I didn't bring out my 12th pack. Uh, it wasn't like in a protest, a demonstration. That's not it. I didn't have any weapons. I wasn't, I didn't have any instrument that could hurt the uh, the judge, you express yourself a bit louder occasionally in Quebec. I know it's not, uh, we're not used to it. Uh, in the US, it's very normal and it's even encouraged. So we have to be consensual and not contradict anybody. So I raised my tone of voice. I've done this throughout my career. Never did it uh, disturb a judge. Uh, maybe they said at the time, Blay, I can hear you well. And well, the judge said this after, but that's not what happened. When I raised that my tone a little bit, and Andre Pitt discussed it because he couldn't believe it, five or six security guards arrived uh, um, uh, urgently in the room, and I hadn't seen them. I'm concentrated on my task. But the judge said, Okay, you better settle down a bit. We'll take a break. That's okay. It's okay that she took a five minute break. So we took the break, I stand up, I walk towards the outside to go and do what I need to do. And then I see these five security guards arriving, running. So there's an availability of security guards at the Palais de Justice. You understand, today there's a hearing that is foreseen with Gloriane Blais. We know her uh, background, lawyer, pro uh, demonstrations. Uh, radiate. She was uh, disbarred. She goes on the social networks to talk about her causes on occasion. So uh, within the causes at the Palais de Justice in Montreal today, it's probably the mo the one that's being the most followed. The journalists are watching this with like this, and there are employees from the government looking at it like this, but they're following it. They're still aware of what's happening. They won't say it, however. Uh, otherwise, it would uh, they'd lose credibility. Uh, just, I'd like to cover a point. Uh, it's not a golden point. It's a point of information. You were a lawyer for how long? 20, 25 years? 22 years. Uh, I have a second cycle diploma in health law and policy. I have studies uh, in anti-corruption uh, from the International Bar Association. I also studied at the uh, United Nations University. I, I studied at the uh, 
Henry Captain Association, which is a very well recognized association in France. Uh, in fact, I went to San Diego, to Chile to follow training uh, courses at the French Association Henri Captain. And I have uh, also an expertise in uh, medical liability. And you have experience in what do we call it? The feminine, well, we said lawyer in litigation, uh, uh, litigation lawyer. That when you're a lawyer in litigation, real litigation, not just uh, recovering a mortgage. I'm talking about real litigation, real trials. This is the profession in the profession of the law of the lawyer. Uh, this litigation is what is hardest in, in terms of nerves. The rest is notary, you know, notary work uh, when we're working in corporate law. Yes. But what I wanted to say is that throughout those years, you had no problems. Everything was fine. Well, I had no problem. Everything was fine. But the security guards, of course, I've never seen a security guard entering the room. I had a cause in civil responsibility. I had a civil responsibility, li medical liability that I won at all levels. I was very well recognized in my career in terms of representative for the victims. But there was a case that I went to the Supreme Court with and the legal system uh, failed, despite all the evidence. I had 14 volumes of evidence. I always uh, show this. So always to say I have a big baggage of experience and I never had problems uh, with security guards that arrive. I've never seen a security arrive because the judges, even if sometimes if I raise my tone of voice a little bit, it was a little bit to make the inner temple tremble like Jesus. When he entered the temple, he was angry because uh, we were um, creating sacrilege of the uh, temple uh, to uh, sell things. So sometimes we can make the inner temple tremble uh, in order to uh, realign things that I was there for the good reasons. It's not like somebody who's going out to yell or to raise the tone uh, uselessly. For me, it's like, whoa, we said it three times and that's it. So I don't say, whoa, 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 in the court. In France, it's frequent uh, that levels of language from the same person, they'll go and do their pleading. In their uh, workplace, they have a language level, which is X. And at home, they'll talk in uh, more of a street cool language. When I speak with you, I speak in my uh, uh, country girl, uh, Eastern Township uh, language. But when I go to plead, I adapt to their level of language. It's normal. But when I speak with you, I speak with my language because I want to be Glorian speaking with you. All that to say that today the judge said when I go into the audience uh, 20 minutes late, it's not my fault, but it's because they couldn't see me exactly. Yes. She had time to answer uh, me with an email and to ask for a security guard. And I repeat to you, six arrived urgently in the space of one minute when I pled in July. So they're available in the uh, Palais de Justice. So after 20 minutes, when I arrived, she said, well, seeing as I'm waiting for a security guard to allow the people uh, to enter the room, so all of a sudden there was nobody. So you waited 20 minutes and all of a sudden, oh, we have no security guards. Okay, and and what happened then? And then she says, well, now I'm re repeating to you, I've already uh, pled as a defendant in this cause. It's a constitutional right. and It's a constitutional obligation, public audiences. It's not something like, oh, please let me in. So there was even an individual who entered the room like a security guard, I don't know what, uh, surely a security guard. She said, Your Honor, before it started, just after that, Your Honor, I just want to inform you that there are lots of people waiting outside. Can I let them enter? And then the judge said, No, according to this uh, law article, I must wait until a security guard be present. A security guard never entered, you understand? And she rendered her judgment without the citizens having access to a public audience. Incredible. It's not for me. It's for the citizens. Anyway, so that's a an interesting technical point because 
I am for direct live broadcasts for the many years, since many years, but of course, always the presence, which is obligatory in my opinion, especially when it's a public audience. Anyway, everything must be public in the legal system. It doesn't matter what it is, a criminal, the medical, uh, the American model of transparency, I think is great so that people can see directly, at least in presence, I never heard in all the history of my career, or even since I'm no longer a lawyer, a judge stopping citizens from entering a room to assist. I've never heard of this. First point. First point, I'll take this into note because I have a question following this, but quickly the follow-up because time is passing quickly. Well, the teams, okay. The teams, so I'm in uh, online. So here she doesn't have any obligation, but she said, well, look, if we don't let any citizen enter in the teams, this she has the right technically, as long as she leaves her door open in terms of the courtroom. But look to see if there are any journalists who want to enter. So the journalists who are paid by the government, financed by the government, have the right to assist on a teams, but not the citizens, whilst we're talking about a file which concerns everybody. Well, this is important, what you've just said. And uh, message Celine is not to cut Glorienne because she has a busy schedule. So I'm keeping the time. So there's no problem. There's no problem. So uh, we weren't feeling very good. Danielle and I have discussions as we see a lot in France, but here we're not very used to this. It's not to cut off uh, the, the, your words, but it's to continue the discussion. So all that to say, he rend she, she rendered her judgment. If I heard properly, I couldn't re, I didn't have the time. I just received the written judgment because she didn't have to give a written judgment, given that there was a verbal judgment, but she still rendered a written judgment. I pled, I read, I don't have to reread it now, but I read it this morning and during the interview with Samuel Grenier. If you want, I can, to me to reread it, I can read it. Well, we can read what, I don't know, five minutes. I don't know what the length is, the total length. So she considered, she considered, no, I won't give you a summary because she considered that the pandemic, from what I understood, perhaps I misunderstood because it was uh, verbal, that the fact that there was no pandemic, there's no connection with the fact, because I wanted to prove that there was no pandemic, there's no connection with the fact that we oblige uh, individuals to wear a mask during the demonstration and... Then I couldn't follow her. All the rest, it was very legally well written, ex but except that that's it. So it was, is it an appreciation, a subjective uh, assessment of the judge, this little passage, according to you? Because uh, it doesn't hold on much, not uh, legally. Well, I had pled that I was a lawyer at the Court of Appeal and article a doctrine article it doesn't mean it's a judge it's more like a professor in of law or a jurist who writes his opinion it was Maurice but he was a law professor at the time and now he's a judge at the court of appeal when i pled he had uh, was already a, a judge at the court of appeal it's a doctrinal article i'm not the one who says it. it's an article that said that a judge let's say the law you can render a decision in this space, okay? But a judge can has a certain latitude to take a decision. Yes. So what this means really is he can take his decision with his uh, good sense uh, as as it's done. Yes, the system's like that. It's okay. And it's okay. It's okay. What it means also is that everybody has access to evaluate a cause on their own. But all that to say that what they say is there is like a large uh, uh, spect uh, spectrum of possibilities. The judges are not restrained to say, oh, no, he really didn't have the right. The, the, uh, often there's a certain latitude and the judge can position themselves according to good judgment, according to the specific situation that's before him. He has to adapt to the situation. So... My interpretation, and after I'll tell you of my interpretation in the sense that I might be better off telling you, I have to be careful. I'm no longer a lawyer, so I can no longer interpret causes. If I'm a prosecutor, uh, taken to court i can be taken to court for 200,000 i have to be careful because i really don't have the financial means for this that's why i have to talk about that but all that to say 
that I told her at the end, I was very calm. Don't worry, I didn't yell. I didn't even speak loudly. She rendered her judgment. After that, she asked me questions for the follow-up, for the trial. And then at a certain moment, I said, it was very solid when I told her, I said, I note, I had never said this uh, directly in front of a judge. Usually when it happened to me, uh, such as the cause for uh, Pascal Antonet for the uh, experimental inject injections or the case for Investment Quebec, that I had written it. But to say it directly before the judge, I had never done it. But I felt that it was my duty to tell her. So I said, I note that you lacked courage. I note that you lacked impartiality in your judgment. You said on the 12th of July that you said on the 12th of July that you were impartial. And I said, yes, but this is still a very heavy case, a serious case, but that you were able, you said that, these were your words. You said that you would be able, capable, and I note that you lacked impartiality and that's why I will go to the to appeal and I will say that in the Court of Appeal, in my appeal. So, and after she no longer, and so I have a decision to take. Well, you're not going to have dinner together tonight, that's clear. I, I, I don't uh, have any problem with her personally. No, no, but it leaves something. You mentioned the uh, Court of Appeal potential. That's a, a probable follow-up. But another point before we uh, go into what you're about to begin quickly, you mentioned earlier access being blocked, uh, uh, citizens' access being blocked. That's a first, you say, in my experience. But technically, I mean, I don't know the terms of the law or anything, but if it was true that the public should have access could it be, for instance, a cause to go to the Court of Appeal or to have a judgment annulled? I'm just asking a question like that. Well, anyway, uh, she rendered a written judgment. I wouldn't use it to go to, uh, into the Court of Appeal. Will I note it in my proceedings, uh, my appeal? Yes, maybe. Oh, you'll note it uh, in a passage. Yes, I could note it in a paragraph uh, that the uh, proceedings weren't even made public. But it's a good question. Of course, when we're writing proceedings, we think about it for uh, a bit more than five minutes. So I can't answer immediately. Now, I think it's important. Transparency of the justice system. We have to explain to the people, and it really uh, touches me because it's at the heart of our democrat, our so-called democratic system, our liberal democratic system, transparency of justice. If it's not there, well, it's another step towards dictatorship because uh, normally when we arrest someone, we're supposed to uh, ex ex speak to them, we use names, uh, we can't have abusive uh, arrest, uh, we need to name names. Transparency is important in our system, not just our system. It's in our in the heart of our democracy. We have to understand uh, correctly. It's not trivial. Yes, and it's important. And that's why it took so much time to talk about it. And I had pled the Universal Declaration of Human Rights when I insisted with uh, Judge La Liberté at the time of the disclosure of the uh, evidence uh, on the mass ticket to allow people to enter on teams. Well, they, uh, Judge La Liberté allowed people to enter in presence in the courtroom. I never heard, I can't believe that there were no security guards, that we couldn't foresee any security guards when we know that there's a cause with Gloria and Blais. I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that I'm dangerous, but perhaps people understood quickly what was happening. Perhaps they have a certain anger. Perhaps, perhaps they're justified to have a security guard. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a security guard. I'm saying how come it wasn't organized so that there weren't two security guards? Uh, if there were people waiting outside in the corridor to have been there before to the Palais de Justice, uh, no matter which one, normally the judge doesn't like having crowds at all. So it's a very good question. It's strange because you brought back your example from July, but beyond the uh, July from uh, example from July, so you've got a crowd waiting outside of the door, and all of a sudden you wouldn't have anybody. It doesn't make sense. But briefly, she could have waited that a security guard be available. She could have done that because, according to the declaration, I've already pleaded it. Uh, pleaded it, but according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. 
audiences must be public. Uh, when it's uh, closed doors, it's when it's uh, youth protection or so on. Everybody understands that. We're all intelligent people of heart. Now we're talking about a cause which concerns the collectivity. Our cause, well, our cause, the cause that I'm working on, it's really, I consider it to be uh, this case must absolutely be made public. And just to say it must be public, uh, currently there'll be a pleading, which I'll listen to on the 11th of October next week, next Wednesday, at the Federal Court of Appeal in Ottawa on the uh, vaccination obligation. Is it in transport or in airplanes? I think it was in airplanes. And they're going to the Court of Appeal because it was declared theoretical in the federal court. Yes, yes, it's the same thing at the federal level and the Center for Justice of Canada. That's it. Well, it's not me, it's them. But what I wanted to say is that the 11th of October, the uh, federal Court of Appeal allowed the citizens of Canada to assist virtually all of them. And uh, because there were a lot of people who wanted to participate and be present and it was bugging up the system. They created a new way to register the people. I registered and I shared it on my Facebook page, how to register if people were interested. Of course, it's in English. We understand it will be in English. It's uh, English Canada, which is presenting it. But what I want to say is that the Federal Court of Appeal ensures uh, that there that it, there be a great publicity in the sense that uh, to, to make the audience public. So I find it completely inconceivable what has just taken place. So on that, I also wanted to speak of another point. Yes, go ahead. We'll talk Well, uh, also with the follow-up. I know that there's your time, so I mentioned it already. We've been over 30 minutes. It's for you. No, it's okay. But for me, anyway, I still have time. If it's okay for you, it's okay. Still, uh, there's no problem. So the uh, follow-up and the point that you wanted to mention. Okay, so that's it. So the follow-up. Uh, the point that I wanted to mention is th the following. I always said it and I repeat it this morning. My mask ticket at the time when I was a lawyer and uh, I, I can find funds, I can afford it. But at this, at the point where I am, the trial begins on Thursday. I can't plead the complaint for uh, the application for unconstitutionally unconstitutionality, but I can plead the uh, Jordan stop the fact that it was abusive. I counter uh, examined police officers uh, during my application for the uh, divulgation of uh, evidence. So I know that the two signatories of the uh, ticket did not note that I was a uh, protesting or demonstrating. They didn't take note of that. They didn't see, real, see it. They didn't see me uh, demonstrating. They both said under oath, and the, uh, there was the exclusion of the witnesses. So one didn't know that the other had said it. There was one police officer who said that it was her colleague who filled out the ticket, who wrote the ticket, and she just signed it. And when her colleague came and testified, he said, no, it's my uh, police colleague who filled out the whole ticket, and I just signed so we see that there's not much credibility. So for me, it's also uh, an abusive uh, trial. Uh, at a constitutional level, we can't treat it. But I, I can go and do the trial on Thursday, Friday, and have myself declared not guilty. So it's taken care of. Glorienne Blais, I don't have to pay for my ticket. I was ready to pay for my ticket, but I can even go as far as being declared not guilty. So it's taken care of. It's settled. Uh, I'm not guilty. I can't. I'm no longer a lawyer. I can't take on the causes of citizens, you understand. So I can't go and fight an application for unconstitutionality uh, against the public health law. But today I decided to put the points on the eyes. I'm a very humble person, very solid, but very humble. I'm not an individual who will show off and all of that because I know that people are in their egos. And as soon as I name my qualifications, People feel, because people are in the ego, they feel as if I was in competition with them. I'm not in competition with them. When you're ambitious, so we're in competition with ourselves, we develop high levels of competency. And what do you want me to tell you? If if we name them, it's not to crush others. It's just part of uh, our truth. And at a certain point, I'll do this because I don't want you to be stupid and fail as a defendant of the people. I'm not a lawyer because this case is a cause, cause which is for my uh, mask ticket. But if I go to defend the public health law, it's not for Gloria and Blais. 
it's for the public health law. Gloria Ann Blair can pay for her ticket. So I'm if I'm attacking the law for public health, it's to make a precedent in Quebec and that it have an effect on the rest of Canada and on the who. Uh, if these ambitions are big and you don't want to have these ambitions, well, abandon your children. It will all be settled. At a certain point, you can't say, oh, I'll let everybody else take care of everything and take all the risks. When I was a lawyer, I pled strongly in court because I wanted justice to be rendered. I chose my causes uh, in and that they be just causes. So I pled and I, I upset my judges. I pled with all of my heart so that justice be rendered to give them courage. But when I was in my office alone with my clients, my clients could tell you, but I can't reveal their names. It would belong to them to speak one day if they wanted to. Well, I shook them up too because for me, I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want them to think, "Oh, the lawyer's going to do everything, and I won't don't have to do anything." No, it's a big battle, and I'm not paid by the machine. I'm not paid by the Canadian Association of uh, Medical Insurance, Doctors Insurance. I'm paid a little bit by my clients, but you have to be my partners, the clients. That's what I explained to them. You have to read your uh, interrogations after having done your interrogations. You have to know them by heart to prepare your uh, counter-interrogation in court. Yes, it's big work. It's a lot of work and you have to pay. You've got to do it. And if you say, well, take a percentage and let's say you win, you'll take 30%. Well, yeah, what if I lose? How do I feed my family, feed myself, uh, house myself and, and ensure my security? So I did that with my clients alone the games. It's not many lawyers who do that with their clients because they want to show that they're the big ones, the big hot ones. They don't say anything and they uh, take carry the burden of the file. That's why lawyers don't take the files where the victims don't have many means because they know they're that they're not at ease to bring their client uh, to a real partnership, real autonomy. I began a file with my client. I began a business with my client in the sense that I began a partnership with my client. The other person had to be as solid as me. Well, so that was my strategy and that was my strategy to win. So that's what you have to understand, dear humans who are part of the public with me. You have to be my partners. And if you tell me, yes, well, there are other lawyers who do it. Okay, to not fail, you have to have the skills and have the integrity, okay? Okay. For my skills, do you have any lawyers who uh, do medical liability like I do? Because this is a health file. This is health law. It's very similar. When you go and do your pleading, are there many lawyers that you know who've gone to plead in the Court of Appeal a few times like me? Not because I lost my cases, because I had to defend judgments rendered in our favor. Have you got files of people who've already done applications uh, for appeals in the Supreme Court or uh, asked for res applications for authorization in the Supreme Court? Do you have many lawyers? I could give you some if you want a reference. C.L.C. St. Arnaud. It's one of my cases in medical liability and obstetrics. You don't, I don't have to publish it because I don't want to, I want to respect the private lives of individuals. But what I want to tell you is I have real expertise in medical liability. I have a master's degree in health law and policy and litigation in uh, the application for unconstitutionality. It's constitutional and medical law. It's health law. It's my expertise. It's as if I had been, I had built my career in terms of being there today. It's a bit strange to say that, but well, yes, perhaps, yes. So I'm telling you that, do you know many people who have skills like I do? And then you can say, yeah, if we're going to take someone who's no longer a lawyer, we'll get a lawyer. Okay, go ahead and get a lawyer. Do you know a lawyer is competent as me, first of all? Second question, when we do these procedures, it's not just to do the procedures and when we go and plead like Maître Desjardins did in August 2021, and he was shaking as he was pleading because he found it so difficult finally. It wasn't just being in his office to write up the proceedings. I, I saw him shaking. At a certain point, you have to be solid enough and aware of the reality you find yourself in. 
You can say, yes, I'm able to do it. I'm capable. I'm capable. You have to be aware that you're risking your life, that you're risking your career. I risked my career. I risked my life. I risked my career enough that I lost my title. Well, I risked it. I can take it, the risk. And as far as my life goes, well, I would like to reduce these risks. That's it. And to reduce these risks to my life, because if she's, if they say, ah, oh, she's going crazy, she's not risking her life. I think it's because you're not aware of uh what we're in because if you're aware of it you would be aware that i'm up against uh very the big guys the really big guys so me what i felt in my little inner voice is that i was living in quebec before even if i had my office uh since 2017 i was living in quebec but i returned uh, and it allowed me to do the uh, Pascal Antonin's file, and I was right next door. But last year, a bit more than a year ago, uh, my little inner voice said, go back to Quebec, because in Quebec, my house, uh, which won't be my house soon, because it belongs to my ch uh, children's father, uh, my house in Megantic is a little house. It's not safe at all. I felt that it could be dangerous. Just to tell you in my file, uh, against uh, in Investment Quebec uh, with Charest. I felt that I was in danger. I discussed it with my client. My client said, oh, yes, it's true. I forgot to tell you that before when I bought that business, my competitor sent somebody to me that said, if you don't want uh, what happened to uh, to the other person to happen to you, uh, well, the other received a bullet uh, in the middle of his body uh, through the window of his house. I heard this in 2020. So this was concerning another cause. So what I'm saying is I'm a, it's a long time that I'm aware of the risks that I'm taking. So last summer, I felt in 2022 that I needed to make my living environment safer for myself and for my children. So I returned to live in Quebec in an environment that's safer. So if you say, why are you talking about this to me? It's your life. It's not ours. But if you want me to defend the cause, the people's cause through my mask ticket, an application for unconstitutionality. It's a direct appeal for the Court of Appeal. You don't even need her to request permission to make this appeal. I'll go if I continue living in a safe environment. I'm not going to risk my life. I love myself too much for that. If I love you, it's because I love me and I love children. That, on top of that, I'm a lion mother. Don't touch my children. You'll receive a baseball bat in the face. So I have a little side, which is a strong lion. I was educated with my parents, they have a big farm of animal farms, of uh, cattle, uh, 200 uh, cows. And I can tell you that when a cow has calved, she can rush at you. Well, I'm like that. Don't touch my children. She can rush at you to protect her uh, little uh, newborn calf, which is fragile. So all that to say that it's not... Uh, my family, my parents, it doesn't belong to us to finance everything. And I, I've used uh, all of my savings to such a point that I risk losing my uh, house in Quebec. Uh, it's not a joke. You can speak with Desjardins. They've been supporting me for a year, Desjardins, because I'm no longer able to pay. And I asked for donations. You know, you were there applauding me I saying, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful demonstration, December 2020. Yes, there's, she's with us. There's one with us. I showed you that I had integrity. But when I lost my sight in March uh, 2022, uh, people told me, go work at Maxi. I can go work at Maxi. No problem. I'm not a snob. That, that's not where you can help the people. Yeah, that's it. That's not how I'm going to help you. If you tell me, oh, yes, we have somebody who's really, really competent who can do what you can do. There's no problem. Go work at Maxi. Well, tell me who it is because I don't see anybody with my skills and my integrity. And just before I'll pass your message because you're doing it very quickly, there's something that I want to show to the people. First of all, we've discussed this before. There's Maître Guibertin. Uh, I believe that he'll give up a cause like this. What he explained to me when he spoke with me about constitutional rights, there's a big decorum and it's very sensitive. It's very touchy. So that's right. In Quebec, there are not uh, tons and he's a very competent lawyer, but I'm telling you to not fail. It takes competence and integrity. Integrity is to want 
without letting go, without dropping it. People say, maybe you're being a little bit too stubborn. Perhaps you should drop it and stop it. Well, if that's what you want, that we abandon our children at a certain point. And I'll show you something. Because yesterday, somebody sent a message publicly. I'll show it, and I'll show it later in the news with the subscribers, and it's worth it. Look who it was. Dr. M Malone. Perhaps some of you know him. A quote, translation, it's time to fight. Otherwise, your children will live in techno-fascism until the end of their natural life. And uh, it's 44 seconds. We're going to listen to it. It's worth it. Message from Dr. Malone. We need to start by discovering that they're not part of our government. In the United States, two people who are notable are Governor Nsinski and Newsom. We must eliminate these people. We must force them to explain if they are or not American or globalists. And if they're globalists, they must get out. They must leave. We, we have to get rid of them. We have to take back possession of our country. If you believe in the Constitution, if you believe in the principle of freedom of expression and personal autonomy, medical autonomy and autonomy at all levels, it's time to fight. Your children will live in a techno-fascism for the rest of their natural lives. And you know, I say it, and I've said it before several times when I was a lawyer, uh, and the uh, to inform the people, the Sai, uh, the Sai uh, are the slaves, S-E-R-F, those are the slaves for the Lord. Uh, it's like uh, slavery, uh, the slavery of the blacks. That's what will leave them as a society. Uh, don't come and say, yes, we were awake, but we preferred going to see shows. At a certain point, I I'm not bothered if you want to go see shows. It doesn't bother me. But what's the real battle? That's what you'll have to take as a decision in your soul and consciousness because at this time and i know i've said it several times we have the laws i'm not talking about the law of pub the public health law i'm talking about what founds our country the founding laws of our country the constitutional law from 1867 and the constitutional law of 1982 anyway the canadian charter of human rights and freedoms and there's also the quebec charter of rights and freedoms all that to say that we have these laws we have the institutions which should protect us However, we must raise the level of consciousness of the institutions, and to do so, we have to push them by making the temple shudder. And for this, as for the judge, I felt it was too much for her. What I'm doing, even the judge wasn't able to do it. However, she delivered, a, she wrote a judgment which was quite competent, like a law professor, so that it would be easily uh, transferable to the Court of Appeal. I find that her judgment, I don't agree with it, but the way she wrote it, she wrote it very well in a legal manner so that be more easily amenable in the Court of Appeal. So I find that positive. It's very, very good. I would say uh, as high as a high professor of law, it's really very well written in terms of competence. I'm talking about competence and integrity. You understand, at least the judgment at the level of competence, it's very well written written and this will help me to go to the court of appeal now i am wondering do i organize myself to be found not guilty and not pay because it's next week my tr a trial i can organize to not pay my ticket exactly and or i decide you support me financially i'm talking with one of my friends i say i have the feeling that i'm always eating my snot, but I have the right to have the same quality of life as I had when I was a lawyer. I'm defending you, so support me. Support me. If you don't want to support me, there's no problem. But don't come and write to me on Messenger after and say, oh, when's it going to end? Well, when's it going to end is when you decide to take the money that you thought you would send and give uh, as a gift uh, or use for a trip. If you say, well, I have $500, I thought I would use it for my vacation. Well, I haven't taken, I didn't take one day of vacation this summer except to spend time with my children while I was at the beach. And as I read jurisprudence for my case while I was at the beach to ensure that my children still had a few hours at the beach. What I'm telling you is that at a certain point, you're going to have to make sacrifices if you want your children 
to have a decent life. This means that our governments choose at a certain point to finally respect our rights and liberties to say, as it's enshrined in the charter, I have a choice to make and you have a choice to make. Do you want to support me financially? If yes, it's written interact, Gloriane.bl. Uh, you have the uh, link below and I ex I'm waiting for your answers. It's within your, it's in your hands. Thank you very much, Danielle. Yes, it's my pleasure. Thank you. And some people are still asking, what's the decision? Well, the decision was rejected. Well, the well, in fact, it's that the application uh, uh, was accepted. My uh, uh, application for unconstitutionality is rejected in a pre preliminary uh, level, but uh, my trial takes place next week. That's very, very soon. So I can be declared guilty. I have to be declared guilty to go to the Court of Appeal. Exactly. If I'm declared not guilty, I can't go to the Court of Appeal. So I have to be declared guilty. I can have a declaration saying that, well, I won't do it here. I'll wait to see your decision. So if I'm declared guilty, well, at that point, the judgment will be rendered next week. So immediately I can go to the Court of Appeal, and I know the proceedings very well, but it's up to you to decide if you prefer to choose somebody, if you consider that another person is more competent and more uh, uh, honest than me, choose them. But if you feel that I'm the good choice, the good player, well, take that decision in your soul and consciousness and don't just say, oh, yeah, I really like her, Gloria. And it's not just that. I want money. I need to live. You understand? Otherwise, I abandon. I stop everything. And uh, okay, we're uh, consent. Everybody, uh, so just a modest contribution. Oh, there are lots of people who say, discuss it with your surrounding also, because even commercial businesses, look, they're closing. This summer closing, we know uh, is coming in certain hospitals. It's going to be compulsory. It's starting slowly, not quickly. So if you want to send a message that it be stopped, well, this is a good way because as a gang, uh, talk about it with your uh, surrounding too. And instead of the ticket of a movie, perhaps a movie ticket, perhaps if you decided uh, you want to go on a plane trip, on vacation, cancel it and send it to me. At a certain point, I don't want to just receive $5 and it's going to work. And also, if you say, well, we're going to stop eating at the restaurant to try to help our uh, grandchildren and our children and our children and our grandchildren. I'm not just talking about mine. I'm talking about the children. We're altruistic. When we're altruistic, we don't just think about our own children, or our own grandchildren. Even if you don't have any children, it concerns you too. If you want to leave behind a society for the future generation, which is solid and free, or you choose slavery. A uh, question that somebody's asking, uh, they uh, don't uh, trust uh, uh, such things. I is there a PayPal link or otherwise it's pay to be paid by Interact? Is Interact possible? Well, it will be to, we'll have to see, but we could discuss it perhaps. I might discuss it with you, Glorian. I use Gib Gibbs and Go uh, specifically because GoFundMe, I don't it really uh, trust it, but thank you very much. Listen. I love you. And of course, we would like, it took place uh, in an odd manner. We're going to come back to it. You're going to do some interviews again this afternoon. Just the, uh, surely the large, the bigger media will contact you. Oh, uh, that's what means that the citizens that say that they're awake act accordingly and understand everything. I know I'm not a snob enough and that people who aren't in love enough need some varnish. I know I should wear some jewels that I should talk uh, and show off and use little words to be considered. But now it's time for you to go into your hearts and to see all the potential that I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gloriane. Thank you for what you're doing. And it's not over. No matter what takes place next week, we know there'll be more. It's uh, just another stage. Thank you very much. And for those 
uh, at one o'clock, uh, there's uh, the news report for FN News. Uh, we'll come back to that. this and we're going to follow everything. We're going to share your information too. We have to talk about it in our surroundings. Uh, you're one of the people who's fighting at the legal level. It's not easy, the situation, and there are a lot of obstacles. I want to tell you something. I've seen uh, causes being pled uh, myself, the opposition, even the lawyers, uh, for instance. I, I've seen lawyers pleading. Uh, really, I was in it. And if you say, well, she's a little bit heavy, Gloriane. She's intense. Well, you can't. It's like an Olympic athlete. You wouldn't be there if you weren't it. You have to be a little bit out of the norm to do things like this. If you're outside, if you're not outside the norm, you can't do these things. And if you think that you can do it and you're not out of the ordinary, it's that at a certain point, your legs are going to start shaking. I am the defendant of the people. I believe that that's my role. But of course... Good evening, dear subscribers of NLB Freedom News. Welcome to this special edition.